Hey Pokédad fan club, it's me Pokédad and today we're doing a Greninja break and this is a greedy Greninja list um, I'm not sure how good it is but back in the day before Tapu Lele came out um, nobody played Shaman EX in their list or very few lists had it usually you either had a traditional build where you're playing 4 Froakie or you're playing Talonflame um, and so you didn't need Lele you didn't need Shaman back then so the idea here is that we don't need Lele in the deck so what we're doing is we're actually playing two uh, max potions two enhanced hammers and two counter catchers very greedy greedy cards and in place we're cutting down on our um, no Espeon EX we're cutting out the Tapu Lele and we're cutting down on other I, other cards like I'm only playing 9 energy instead of 10 so yes this is a very greedy list um, I'm not even sure that it's that good but we're gonna just try it out because it seems like those six cards that I mentioned, the two counter catchers, the two enhanced hammers, and the two uh, max potions are all needed really to deal with the meta of today. So anyway, my first turn was pretty much a typical Greninja turn. You just really want to try to get two Froakies out. If you get the two Froakies out, um, then you have an easier time, then if they knock the one out, you can just get a Frogadier the next turn. So we'll Evasota into the Frogadier. We'll attach the energy. And we'll just go ahead and water duplicates. And see, we haven't even used a supporter yet for the first turn. Uh, first or second turn, which is good. This is typically what you want to try to do. Because if we end here, then there's a chance we end into a Frogadier. And you know that Froki we can put a Frogadier on it later uh, if if this one gets knocked out so our opponent he's playing uh, Lycanroc and he has a pretty good start he has the fighting energy and a DCE and a uh, Evasota himself and he goes ahead and gets a Rock Ruff down and it looks like two Zerua so now we know we're playing uh, Zoroark, Lycanroc, and he gets a Colosslash off to take a knockout. So um, that Lycanroc's putting a lot of pressure on for the very first, uh, for the, for this game. Now I Brooklet Hero here, and I realize that my uh, Staryu uh, and my, my, yeah, my Staryu and my Tapafini are both prized, so that's unfortunate. We're going to go ahead and try to relieve a little bit of the pressure from this um, Lycanroc here by using Countercatcher and then Inning. And so we kind of, we actually got a really good hand here because uh, we've got a second Greninja in place and we've got the splash energy so if we do get knocked out um, we can just um, we can bring that Greninja back to our hand and just uh, keep recycling the Greninjas we do see him evolve into Zoroark here and if he has a float stone he could, uh, oh he has Guzma here, if he had a float stone he could come in and do Dangerous Rope. But instead he's just going to Guzma up the Frogadier, which I think is fine. Uh, once I've hit my first um, item that will allow me to recycle Pokemon, then I will be okay to take, to go ahead. To get those back so no worries there go ahead and ultra ball here probably get a break 
be nice if we could get a giant water shuriken off this turn. And I'm only playing five basics and four splash. And like I said, it's a it's a greedy list, so I don't. So I, when I end here, I end into a. Um, And into no energy. We do enhanced. We do have enhanced hammer, so maybe we can relieve a little bit of pressure there. The guy so far has hit pretty much everything he needs. Um, gonna go ahead and get the other breakout. And we're just gonna shadow stitch here and we'll put 70 damage on this lichen rock. Hits DCE and Kikui. Oh my goodness, this guy is getting so lucky. So now he can dangerous rogue here for a knockout. He goes ahead and fill fill blowers, which is fine. And so we see that Greninja go bye bye. So it looks like. You know we're struggling right here. Can we uh, can we make a comeback? And you know that's Greninja's forte, though. It's always been where it's gonna get a very slow start and then try to make a comeback. Can we stabilize in this match, though? This Lycan Rock has put a lot of pressure on us <clears throat> very early. And we will Cynthia here. We'll go ahead and use the counter catcher, bring up the other Lycan Rock. Hopefully they won't find another energy. And give us a chance to, to you know, a turn maybe where we can can catch our breath a little bit. So we rescue stretcher. I could put shuffle stuff more stuff back in. But I really just want to, I really, he only has three prizes left, so I really only need three Greninjas from here on out. And I have this Greninja and another Greninja in the deck. So we're just going to Shadow Stitch for 40, trying to keep them from being able to use their abilities. And he has the DCE, oh my goodness, and the Sycamore. This guy is just hitting everything. Uh, even after all the ends. Only got 19 cards left in the deck. And now he plays a parallel city down. And he reduces his bench by 30. I mean by uh, down to 3. And that will reduce the attacks of his Zoroarks down. So he hits me for 130 here. And I'm going to end him down to 3 again. Let's see if we can actually hold him in place this time. Unfortunately, we didn't hit another energy. So we are, again, uh, struggling. And I don't really want to use the max potion because then I'll have to discard the energy. So maybe we'll have to use the max potion for something in the future. But we've ended him to three. We're going to shadow stitch once again. And let's see. I mean, we know he's going to take a knockout with a claw slash here. He has another parallel city. And he has a float stone. And he just has the claw slash. Okay, so this turn was a little bit less uh, aggressive, but we're down to he's down to two prizes. So the question is is can we mount a comeback here? And I'm just going to go ahead and get rid of the Froakie and Frogadier because, again, I don't 
he's down to two prizes. It's like I've got to get these last two Greninjas uh, basically to to stick. So I think what I'm going to do is Sycamore here. So I'm going to Giant Water Shuriken this active. And then I'm just going to Sycamore because he didn't do much after that last um, after that last turn. And we don't see a and unfortunately here we don't see a um, another water energy. So I have to attach the splash. And the splash is only hitting for 20 if I shadow stitch because of the stadium. Um, 40 if I keep the energy on. But the choice band doesn't help me, so I have to just moonlight slash here. But I'm gonna go ahead and remove the energy. Um, because I have the max potion in hand and so I'll be able to use that next turn so we'll take two prizes here and we can finally get our star you so now our opponent can trade so there's trade number one see puzzles so we're probably looking at double puzzles and he just gets two DCE back I'm not really sure why that helps him because I would think stuff like I don't know supporters Kikui I'm not sure but anyway he ends us to four so he takes the max potion and the energy out of my hand. Fortunately, I have a lot of uh, energy available still. So, I mean, I imagine he would come in with the Lycan Rock and hit for 130, but he might be scared that I'll be able to take it out. So, but if he doesn't use the Lycan Rock, then all he can do is hit for 30. Yeah. See, this is where the Parallel City going hurts him facing it that way. So we're able to get the Enhanced Hammer, but we know he's got energy back in the deck. But we go ahead and play the Enhanced Hammer, and I think we're more concerned about Lycan Rock. So we're going to go ahead and Super Rod here, and at this point we really don't need Greninja pieces, but we do need, if we can get this Starmie back online, that could be really useful. So we're just going to get this the Starmie and the two uh, Water Energies, and we're just going to stick more here. We'll have seven cards left in our deck after we see these cards, and so we get an Energy but we don't get the splash energy back. We do get the max potion, so we can go ahead and max potion here <clears throat> and save ourselves um, a knockout. And we'll attach the regular energy, and I think we just have to shadow stitch, especially since our opponent just has the three cards in hand. Now, unfortunately, it only does 20 damage. Um, so we will have to see here. We have a a lot of water energy and at least one more splash energy in the deck. He's gonna Guzma. So he's just gonna KO the Star You. So again, he gets kind of lucky finding all the pieces that he needs when he needs them. That's so surprising uh, out of all the cards he has. But anyway, maybe we can mount a comeback now. Uh, since we know we still have a lot of energy in the deck. So the question is, is what do I Giant Water Shuriken like? I'll go ahead and start Giant Water Shuriken active. 
And at this point, I think that it may not even be worth my while to shadow stitch anymore because, um, you know, we only have three cards left, and we only they only need one prize. So, uh, or maybe we can get a combo here with a giant water shuriken with a shadow stitch and take a knockout. That might be good, but this is gonna, we are gonna definitely take this. Yeah, at 140 we do need to um, use the choice fan and just do a moonlight slash. We only have three cards left in deck, so we have a couple waters left. So we moonlight no oh yes yeah, shadow stitch for 70 you know, because of the choice span. So we take the knockout there. Oh there's Tapufini and there's another Greninja. Welcome even though you're late to the party. We're down to two prizes now. So really we just need um, just one more knockout on one of these two guys. So let's see if we can manage it. We've got an energy in hand, so we can. We got at least one giant water shuriken, and then so 60 plus 80 would be enough to knock this lichen rock out. We see an acerola, but the acerola, the Zorart, not the lichen rock, which is interesting. Um, so it looks like we've got this game uh, in hand. We can just giant water shirk in the active for 60 and then moonlight slash for a knockout. And even though it came down to the end, uh, oh, he plays baby buzzball. He, he got that out, but it's too little, too late. So we'll just giant water shirk in here. I'm just checking my math and giving a well played here. And our opponent says we have a good deck. And yeah, Moonlight Slash and Victory. Alright, so um, the next match. I'm going to just commentate just briefly on it once it comes up. Um, I'm not going to commentate on the whole thing. It's a, uh, a very interesting mill deck, but with Greninja I just win pretty easily. Um, and I'm going to probably fast forward it. I'll play it, but I'll probably play it in a little bit faster speed than than normal. So we're looking for another opponent. And you can see them in that last match, the max potion came in handy. Um, the enhanced hammers were used also even though they did double puzzle to get them back um, and then also we counter captured there so you know we're using six cards that normally Greninja only has maybe two maybe four slots for um, we're using six so in this matchup we get a couple mulligans and start a Froakie, which is good. That's typically what you want to start. Star use okay. Feeny is decent. I mean, I don't have any other starters because I don't play Lele or Espeon. Uh, but I look at this and I'm seeing, whoa, a Rhyperior uh, deck. And for those of you that don't know, that Rhyperior, when it evolves, um, it takes, it, you can choose to discard three cards from the top of your opponent's deck. So the idea with this deck is that the opponent is going to try to stall with Hoopa 
and then kind of try to discard with uh, Rhyperior. And I'll go. I'll commentate a couple minutes into the match just so you can kind of understand the concept that's going on. But this is actually a really easy deck to beat, especially since they don't play any energy denial. So we see two Hoopas come down and the I don't know Ride On. I, I don't remember what the basic of Rhyperior is. And he Cynthia is right off the bat, so he's he's actually got a pretty good start. He's got you know th three Pokemon on the bench. He's got a Rangaroo, so that if uh, he needs to draw any more, he can. I'm not 100% sure Rangaroo is needed in the deck, but um, I guess he it allows him to draw more cards. So he's probably playing a lot of items, and when you play a lot of items that especially the items that are what I call insta plays uh, those are kind of like max elixirs ultra balls the cards that you can use right away um, then orangaroo is good because you can pull more cards so it gets off to a good start I'm I'm looking at this and I didn't see an energy drop so I could have bubbled here and I'll, by the way that's another thing I should point out is I'm not playing the 70 HP Pokemon yet um, I prefer Bubble, um, just because Bubble has won me some games. Um, I get that an extra 10 damage is good, but in a um, deck like against Buzzwall, which can hit 70 easily anyway, uh, with Diancie and Regirog and Strong Energy, it just seems like you're going to get knocked out anyway. So here I go ahead and um, evolve into Frogadier, and I probably shouldn't have done this. Um, my thinking was is I'm going to go ahead and get a Starmie set up because it doesn't look like he has any way to block abilities, and that means if he is playing Energy Denial, then I can get the Starmie uh, set up and I can have infinite energy basically. But I probably should have saved the Ultra Ball for a Greninja, so that because I had the Break in hand already, so we could go ahead and start doing uh, some other stuff. Now you see he has the Rhyperior, and he goes ahead and, and he mills three cards off the top of my deck. But this next turn, I'm going to be able to just Shadow Stitch. So we see an Ultra Ball here, so we can go ahead and get rid of. Enhanced hammer because it's not it doesn't look like the guy's playing any energy and we'll get rid of an in and We'll go ahead and grab the Greninja And really at this point, I, I don't remember if I play a supporter here or not By the way, this the Starmie is prized, but I don't know if I play a supporter here or not I do I guess I go ahead and play it. Uh, I guess again I, I haven't realized the Starmie is prized and I'm thinking man if I can get into Greninja break and start using giant water shuriken consistently then I can um, you know I can win that way but now it's just a matter of shadow stitch we're gonna just simply do 40 damage but now those Rhyperiors can't use their ability to mill me and so he plays another how and so basically, the game from here on out is just Shadow Stitch, Shadow Stitch, Shadow Stitch. I don't need to bring anything else up, out because I don't want it to get stalled by something like Counter Catcher or Guzma. And so it's just Shadow Stitch, Shadow Stitch, Shadow Stitch, Shadow Stitch, Shadow Stitch. So guys, I'm not going to commentate anymore on this game. Um, having the star me would have been good, but it was prized. Um, the, about, you know... 10 turns in the opponent realizes that there's no way he can win because I'm not drawing I'm not using any of my cards and I'm saving my ends and my Cynthia so that I can shuffle cards back into my deck if I need it um, so anyway guys I'm just gonna I'll speed up this and let you finish watching this part of it
Okay guys, so we're starting back again with game three. And again, we're, remember this is the, I'm just showing off this Greedy Greninja deck. Uh, looks like I'm playing against another Zorark match. I would have liked to have seen against, uh, I don't know, something like uh, Malamar. I would have liked to have got a Malamar match for you. Because when they're playing Tina promo, the counter catchers really come in clutch to help with that. Um, but we'll just have to deal with another Zorark. And this time it's a different version of Zorark. It's quite a unique version. I actually quite like it. Um, and this game really comes down to the wire, so stay tuned for the whole thing. While we're getting set up though, um, let's ask the ask a question of the day. What Pokemon card from the next set? If you've seen any of the spoilers already, what Pokemon card from the next set are you most excited about? Uh, I know a lot there. Ra Ra Raquaza GX uh, is getting a lot of hype. But is that your favorite card, or is there another one? Um, there's Stack Attacka and several others. So in the comments below, tell me what the card from the next set you're most excited about. Anyway, our opponent pulls out a Zygarde. And you notice I just drew past. I don't have a supporter into in my hand, which is kind of unfortunate, um, which is also why uh, Greninja sometimes just bricks and with me not playing a Lele in there uh, it can brick even more so uh, but as long as if he can't take a knockout on this turn then we can potentially we'll get to water duplicates here he does play uh, parallel city here and that's not super important to us. He also plays a puzzle of time, so that tells me that his hand is kind of um, dead, which is good. Maybe we, he won't he won't get to use all four puzzles. Maybe only get to use one um, one set of them. But we'll go ahead and evolve into our frog deer, and we'll do our thing with the water duplicates. And even though we don't have a draw supporter for next turn, we're able to thin a lot because we will be able to have um, our Greninjas uh, in hand. Uh, we, we'll be able to get to Greninjas because of the Evisodas that are in there. And we're just kind of looking at our deck, making sure it looks like we've got a couple Cynthia's prized and, and, and some Waters prized. So. Ooh, that can be tough. But anyway, at least we get all three of our Frogadiers out. And even though he parallel cityed me down to three, um, we're able to get all of our Frogadiers. I do expect this Frogadier to go down this turn, though. And so we see uh, one of the Zoroarks get evolved. So even though he was in a little bit of, uh, even though he used his puzzle of time, uh, he must have had that Lele on top, and so he knew, so then he was able to Ultra Ball to get the uh, Zorark. So he's really flying through his deck, I've still got 40 cards and he's already down to 29. Um, if he he probably will take a knockout. I imagine he can get a Zor another Zorark in play, get a DCE, and that will be that. Oh, he's just gonna use a Fighting Energy to retreat, and he'll go into the Zygarde, and then he'll evolve, and then he'll trade again. So down to 25 cards on our opponent's side. And he just uses Cell Connector, so he will get powered up with Zygarde. You know, last week I featured Zygarde, and 
You know, Cell Connector is a pretty good attack. I mean, Choice Band and Diancy, and that thing's hitting for, you know, 50, 80, 100. So I feel like, um, I feel like it's, it's a good, uh, it's a good card that Zygarde is kind of getting, being slept on. But we'll go ahead and evolve one of our Frogadiers. I'm not really sure why I'm taking so much time. I, I guess I'm wondering if I should evolve the active. But at least the first Evo Soda I don't need to really think about because I know that's going to be one of the bench. The question is, is do we want to go ahead and start Shadow Stitching here? Or do we want to just put some pressure on and start Moonlight Slashing? I mean, the guy's already pretty much set up. Um, we know that he'll probably take a knockout next turn. We can go ahead and field blower the stadium and I guess this is where I'm thinking is I have a water energy on there. Do I want to go ahead and moonlight slash here? And I think I do. I think I'm just going to go ahead and grab the water back. And my idea here is even though I know I'm going to get knocked out, um, maybe I can start giant water shuriking and take take a knockout on this Zygarde because it is kind of a threat you know it can hit 150 with the GX attack and he can spam that with Bonnie and even though it, it's not going to stop me from hurting it it will stop me from uh, it will do more damage so We see some trades going on here. He's already at down to 20 cards and I still have 38. And we see a double puzzle of time here. So what could he be getting back? So it looks like a Guzma and an Ultra Ball. All right, so because he didn't get his, he's getting an Ultra Ball back. to get I don't I don't know he's gonna have to have a float stone or an energy on a Lele to be able to do his money he gets rid of Regirock and an energy to get another Zygarde okay so he wants to get another Zygarde set up oh now it makes sense now he's playing Max Elixir the first one whiffs And the second one hits, so he has an energy on that Zygarde now. Plays an energy down to Lele, so he can now use the Guzma. And I imagine he'll take out the other Greninja, which that's fine. Um, so he does take that out. And that's unfortunate. But we can just rescue Stretcher that Greninja back. Um, and we'll still have two in play so the real question here is do I go ahead and get a break I feel like if I get a break I can do a giant water shuriken and take a knockout and get prizes and I know I have a lot of Cynthia's in the prizes um, because at least two of them were prized so we can giant water shuriken here and go ahead and get another Greninja going. By using Rescue Stretcher. And so now, when this Greninja break goes down, we'll still have, we can play a Froakie um, and a Greninja and a Greninja break. So we'll giant water shuriken here, doing 60 more damage to that Zygarde, and then we'll moonlight slash, and we're not gonna put, we're just gonna do the 60. We don't want to put the energy back to hand because when he when we knock when he knocks us out, we want to be able to have all the pieces back. 
we did give him uh, unlock this. The other thing that's unusual about this is in the first match, I shadow stitched a lot, but in the second match, I realized that the opponent is just flying through his deck so quickly that it really doesn't matter um, if I shadow stitch because I'm not really keeping him from much. Uh, and in that case, getting the Zygarde off the you know off the field was more important. So we see a DCE come down and we see the riot is beating, hitting us for 20, but and that knocks us out, but we get to keep everything. Now at this point I'm at a juncture in the game where I'm like, do I I top deck splash energy, which is super good. I know I'm gonna be using that. And I'm able to get the Greninja break and the Greninja in play, and I put the Froki down. So I know that, but I, I'm not sure if Giant Water Shuriking here, the Zerua, is the right play. Um, it takes a prize for us, but it might have just been better to go for the two prizers, and I think in general that's probably what is best. So I go ahead, but I go ahead and take the one prize off the field, and my thought is, is if he puts another one prizer down. Uh, I can take a knockout on it, so at the very least it'll prevent him from doing that. And I get a choice band, which is good too. And then I Cynthia here, um, getting a fresh hand of six. So I have this star you, star, star you I can put down. And I've got another Froki, so I can start building another Greninja line if I need to. And in this case, I'm only going to Shadow Stitch because I can get 70, and it does keep him, you know, from have, being able to use Trade. So we'll see what our opponent does now on his next turn. The weird thing about this is I'm actually ahead on prizes, so now in, which normally helps you in Grenin with Greninja, is now hurting you. Um, gets another energy on the Zygarde and he Guzmas again. This time he Guzmas the Staryu and uh, I'm actually okay with that. I see people going for the Staryu a lot of times and they're not really realizing that they're not dealing with the threat on the field. I've actually considered taking the Staryu line out and going back to old school and just playing the deck um, like just playing the deck where you use fisherman or energy re recite retrieval or something like that uh, because those cards were good back then and even though Starmy gives you infinite cards it just doesn't always uh, isn't always the best because it becomes a target and you only have so many ways to recur items or recur it back into the deck all right so we see a field blower we shadow stitch again we've got 70 on this side guard hopefully next turn we can take a knockout on it now he's turning it the other way so now he's only got three pokemon on the bench like he ends again so we're end and we got a pretty good hand here plays the choice band just to get it out of his deck and he hits us with lands wrath for 130 um, we can go ahead and use the e hammer so we don't draw back into it again and we can giant water shuriken for 60 which is 130 but then we can't take the knockout because of the parallel city Parallel City is one card I can't wait to see rotate. I think a lot of people feel that way. It's it was it's just been one of those cards that's really been kind of a troll. But well, Giant Water Shuriken here. And we're at 130, and I could have and I retreat here into. 
uh, the other Greninja break and I just shadow stitch since he's down to two cards I'm only doing 20 damage but hopefully next turn we can take a knockout on this uh, Zygarde of course he has a Cynthia so now he's down to seven cards in deck and I still have a whopping 26 but I'm still set up that's the interesting thing is in spite of all that I still have you know all the pieces he's still got to take three more prizes but we are getting low on energy because remember I only play five energy in this deck so we have an enhanced hammer so we'll enhanced hammer and unfortunately we don't have much else other than that so we're gonna just have to shadow stitch here I think I almost wanted to Moonlight Slash because he only has seven cards and if he trades twice he'll be really close to decking himself out but he only has uh, one DCE left so we'll see what he can do here it's coming down to the wire though he has another float stone though so he'll be able to take a knockout with the Zygarde and we've just been in top deck mode for the past couple turns so it doesn't look good for Greninja on this match Let's see if we can, can pull it together though we do get a giant water shuriken here which is good and we're building our pieces up once again so we can take a knockout on the Zygarde that'll take us down to one prize so maybe we can pull this one out but that is all of our water energy so we have no way to get our energy back I do get the max potion off of the prizes and so I can go ahead and max potion this it, I have to get rid of an energy but I think it's worth it and so now we will moonlight slash here and we will just take the energy back so we're trying to set up uh, I know the problem is is I don't have any more basic water energy and my Starmie and Staryu are both in the prizes I mean in the uh, discard pile so I need to um, get hit my super rod really badly so he's only got three cards left in deck what can our opponent do he's uh, you know it seems like there's not much left for him but I'm really down to this one last splash energy until I hit that super rod so what is our opponent going to do he's taking some time he puts a Zygarde down so he indeed has another Zygarde so I'm gonna have to go through another Zygarde yet again He plays Diancie Prism Star down. I think he realizes my energy is getting low, so that I'm probably going to have to start Moonlight Slashing. So he plays a DCE to Zygarde. Looks like he's gonna sell connector here. He 
looks at his last couple cards. And he does sell connector here, so he does 70 damage with the Diancy. And I'm thinking to myself, I have a couple problems here. Um, I, I have Tapu Fini in uh, in the deck, but this is my last energy. Um, I have a lot of stuff including the Super Rod and I have a lot of draw cards still that I can hit. But the problem is, do I want to use my last energy on Tapu Fini this turn? And I almost get it, and I probably should have gotten it. I evolve into the Greninja. And I'm really debating. I really have missed my draw supporters, and not having the Tapu Lele GX in my deck has been a problem in this game but I'm gonna just Moonlight Slash here for the 80 and I still think maybe Finny was the best play there to grab Tapu Finny cause now he's gonna take a knockout on this Greninja break and I, I haven't accounted for the fact um, that he can use his GX attack. Maybe Shadow Stitching would have been better there. Maybe not though. Maybe I want this to be knocked out. Actually looking at this position, I don't know that it's as dire as I thought. Oh, yeah, I think what I was going to do was I was going to do 80 and then 40. So he would do he would GX, but then after his GX, um, it would only do 150 because the Diancy, and then I could do another 80 and win. But then bringing out the Parallel City is a game changer. So now I can still do I can still do Shadow Stitching here, and he won't be able to knock me out. But, the problem is, is I can't make the math work in time. So now I'm forced to go for the Tapu Fini play. It's really my only out here. Um, because I, I'm just, I don't have anything in hand. I, I need to top deck as draw supporter, if, if at all possible. So we're going to use Tapu Storm GX and we'll reset that Zygarde into the deck. And our opponent will uh, promote the Zoroark. And at this point, man, we don't have any energy. Um, we need our Super Rod. We need a draw supporter. We need something to help us get this get set up. And, and we need it fast. Because he can easily get back to the Zygarde. Yeah, he uses a Bridget here to get the Zygarde back out. So he's got, again, got four cards in deck. He only has an energy that he attaches. He doesn't dig for the DCE, which is surprising. We top deck a Cynthia. All right, so maybe we're still in this. All right, so yeah we've got we get the super rod and we get a Brooklyn Hill so we can soup we can evolve into Greninja and we can get the star you and star me line back and we can get another water energy uh, and we have the Evo soda in hand so we can Brooklyn Hill for the star you uh, and then next turn we can Evo Soda for the Starmie and we'll have a, at least a shot. Um, 
Matter of fact, we can just double giant water shuriken the Diancy on the bench. So we'll go ahead and get the Staryu. Hopefully, he, you know, if he has a Guzma, then it's fine. But I, I think he's so limited on resources that Guzma is not available. So we're going to Aqua Ring here. And we'll go ahead and Aqua Ring into the Greninja Break. Uh, because we want to be able to do two giant water shurikens next turn. And take a win on the uh, Diancy there. Diancy Prism Star. So he gets another fighting energy, so of course we're going to see Cell Connector here, 470. And... Fortunately for us, we have um, the other Greninja Break. And we have the Staryu that we can get. Starmia, I mean... And our opponent gives us a well played. And so we'll use the Starmie's ability. Oh, well, our opponent just gives us the victory. So that was a very, very excellent game. Very close game. And I, you know, I, this is Greedy Greninja. It plays the two max potions. It plays the counter catchers. And it plays two enhanced hammers. And in place of a water energy, a Tapu Lele, an Espeon, um, and I think I even took draw support down to 10 draw supporters when many people were playing 11 or 12. So I'll go ahead and show you the list. Um, it's mostly a typical Greninja list. Um, I don't know how if I wanted this greedy, I think I would want the Tapu Lele back in the deck. Um, but I almost want to test it without a Starmie line. So anyway, it's 4-4-4-3 Greninja, 1-1 one, one Starmie, and the Tapu Finny, two Counter Catchers, two Enhanced Hammers, four Eva Sodas, two Blowers, two Max Potions, a Rod and a Stretcher, four Ultra Ball, three Brooklyn Hill, and then you got three Sycamore and three Cynthia, four in, um, two Choice Bands, four Splash, and just five water energy. But I almost wonder if taking the Starmie line out and putting a Fisherman or dropping your uh, Sycamore counts down to maybe just two, going to four Cynthia, playing a Fisherman and maybe a um, Energy Retrieval might work better. But anyway guys, that's the list. Uh, try it out for yourself. Tell me what you think of Greedy Greninja. Um, hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and uh, give me a comment below. Remember the question of the day is what card are you looking for um, in from the next sec, set, set most? Um, and put that in the comments below. Tell me also what you think of this deck. We'll talk to you later. Bye.